and welcome to video four of the data representation series. In this video, we're going to be adding and subtracting numbers, especially binary numbers. And we're gonna jump straight in with a question. Now, this is a typical binary question. And before we tackle this question, there's a few rules that we need to be aware of. And I will add those rules to the left-hand side. If we add a zero and a zero, it will give us zero. If we had a zero and we add a one to it, it becomes one. If we have a one and a one, it will become one zero, not 10. Okay, if you say 10, you'll end up getting confused. This is a one and a zero. They are two separate binary bits. If we have a one plus a one plus a one, then it will give us one one. And you'll see what I mean when we go through this question. But if you remember these rules, that's all you will really need for doing binary addition. And this question asks us, using binary addition, calculate the number that would result from adding 0010101 and 00111100. And it wants us to produce the result in hexadecimal notation. So where do we begin? I begin by writing out both of the numbers with the first set of numbers above the next set of numbers. Now it's important that you align them here because if we make any mistake, we will lose a mark. All I need to do is remember my rules. I take one and zero, and that gives me one. I take zero and zero, that gives me zero. I take one and one, and I carry the one. I take zero and one, and because I've got a carry bit, that gives me zero, and I carry the one. Again, I have a zero, one, and one. That gives me zero, carry the one. I have one, one, and one from my carry bit, and that gives me the value of one. I carry one over, and then I write one down there because I've got zero, zero, and one. And finally, zero and zero is zero. Now I've got my final answer. I'm just gonna rewrite it out because I've read that the question wants me to convert the result into hexadecimal notation. So like we learned in the previous lessons, I'll write down my full eight bit number and I'll split it into two nibbles and work out the hexadecimal. And because my nibbles are zero, one, one, zero, that gives me the value of six. And on the right hand side, I've got zero, 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 one, that gives me the value of one. And the key to this question is simply reading the question and remembering the binary addition rules. This is the other type of question that you'll get. Convert the hexadecimal numbers 3e and 27 into binary numbers and using binary addition, calculate the number that would result from adding them. Now this question is worth five marks and the first thing that I would do is break the hexadecimal down into its binary numbers. So I take 3e and I turn the nibbles into an 8-bit binary number. And that will give me 0011 1, and 1110. And for 27, it would give me 0010 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. I combine the two nibbles of each hexadecimal number into a byte and I place them on top of each other, ready for my binary addition to take place. And then I use my standard rules. I take zero and one, that gives me one. I take one and one, gives me zero, carry the one. I'll take one and one and one. I'll put one down and carry the one. I have one, zero and carry one. So that means I get zero and carry another one. Then I get one and zero with a carry one. That gives me zero again. Carry the one over, I've got one, one, and one. That gives me one. And then I have zero and zero, but I have a one carry bit, and that gives me one. And then to finish, zero and zero, that gives me zero. So now I've performed my binary addition. What I need to do now is convert my answer into a deanery number. So simply take my final answer, apply the values from one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64 and 128 on top and I just add the numbers up and that gives me a total of 101. So where do we get our marks for this question? We well, get one mark for converting your hexadecimal numbers so that'll be two marks in total 
you get one mark for your correct binary addition and you also get a mark for showing your carry bits in the right places. And then finally, your fifth mark comes from the correct conversion back into Deanery. Here's another question for you to have a go at. Feel free to pause the video and have a go before we start. If you carry on, I'll just quickly go through and explain what I've done. So the first thing I did was I converted the Deanery numbers 106 and 57 into an unsigned 8-bit number. And if it's unsigned, it means the most significant bit or the 8th bit is not a signed number. So that gives me a full range of all of my numbers. And converting 106 give me 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And converting 57 give me 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. And that would get me two marks in my exam. I then stacked the numbers on top of each other, ready for my binary addition to be carried out. And then I perform my binary addition. If I have a zero and a one, that'll give me one. If I have a one and a zero, it'll give me one. Zero, zero is zero. One and one is zero carrier one. Zero, one and a carrier one will give me zero carrier one. One, one and one will give me one carrier one. And one, zero, and carry one will give me zero, carry one. Zero, zero, and one will simply give me one. And that gives me the final binary addition total of one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one. And the final part of our question asks us to convert your binary answer into a hexadecimal number. That's nice and simple. I'm just going to rewrite out my binary answer again, I'll split it into two nibbles tell you what the hexadecimal number is. And for this question, the answer was A3. This next question, we start talking about subtraction. Now computers are very, very complex adding machines and they're very good at adding. So what we do with our subtraction is we actually turn it into an addition. And we do that by turning our negative numbers negative by using two's complement. Now forget about sign and magnitude here, we always use two's complement. The first thing I'm going to do here is work out what the value of positive seven is. And I'm gonna use eight bits for this example. So to represent seven in eight bit binary, it's zero, 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 one, one, one. And then to apply two's complement, remember the rule is to go up to and including the first bit, starting at the least significant bit, and then invert the rest. So my negative seven should be one, 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 zero, zero, one. And then on the right hand side, I work out what the eight bit binary is for positive four. That's zero, 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 one, zero, zero. And then I stack them up and simply add them together. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to demonstrate that if you add four to minus seven, it should give you minus three. So when I add them together, I have one and zero, and that gives me one. If I have zero and zero, it gives me zero. Zero and one gives me one. And the rest of ones and zeros will all return one. And that I could say is negative three. However, we want to reverse this process. We want to put it back into one's complement to prove that it's positive three and that the final answer I got was negative three. So again, I go up to and including the first bit and then I invert the rest. And if you work that out, it will come to positive three. So it must have meant that my final answer was negative three. Now in every question, you need always to reverse the final answer when you're doing binary subtraction. So in this question, it does specify that we're using eight bits and we're trying to show that minus five is the result of the binary addition of four and minus nine. So the first thing I do is demonstrate what positive four is and then I'll demonstrate what positive nine is. Once I've completed that, I will apply two's complement to show negative nine then I will stack the values 
binary add them together and then reverse the two's complement process to prove that the binary addition of 4 and minus 9 is minus 5. So the 5 marks of this come from the binary conversion of positive 4, the 2's complement representation of negative 9, the binary addition of plus 4 and negative 9, and then the carry bits, and finally you're reversing the answer back. And that's everything that we need to cover for binary addition and subtraction. Hopefully you can take away from this and now you understand how adding binary and subtracting binary is a fairly simple process. In the next video, we're going to talk about floating point numbers. And students often struggle with floating point numbers and it's the hardest one to grasp out of everything we've done so far. But hopefully, we'll make it quite simple. I'll see you there.